Tandem Nomads, episode 82. What the gamble I took really did pay off, and you never know who's reading it. So if you think this is something worthwhile writing about and you feel passionate about it, do it. Because you never know who is out there reading your words and what it's going to lead to. Welcome to Tandem Nomads, the podcast show designed to help expat partners turn their dual career challenges into a successful, portable business and thrive in their global nomadic life. To download your free guidebook on the six steps to build a successful, portable business, go to tandemnomads.com. Hello, Nomad Nation. This is Emel Deregui. And the topic of our episode today is about blogging. We all know how blogging can be great, a great tool for you to develop your portable business. And I brought to you here an expert in blogging. And um, blogging is such a um, a common tool for marketing, especially online, to build an audience and transform this audience into customers. So I wanted to share with you some tips and, and brought to you our special guest, Mariam Navaid Otimofiori. <laughs> Hi, Mariam. <laughs> Are you ready for the ride? Hi, Amel. I'm ready for the ride. Thank so you for I, having me. Oh, you're very welcome. I just want to make sure I pronounce your name properly. Yes, you did a great job. I was just going to add, you actually did a pretty good job. Mariam Ottimofiore, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. So Nomad Nation, Mariam is from Karachi, Pakistan. As an expat child, she grew up in Bahrain, New York City, and Pakistan. After her... Um, studies. After that, she studied in the US and the UK. She launched her career as an economist and spent eight years in investment banking before she joined her husband abroad. Together, they have two, two lovely children and lived in Germany, Denmark, Singapore, and today they live in Dubai. While moving from a country to another, Mariam gave up her corporate career and started writing. She was the content editor and travel writer for a local lifestyle magazine in Singapore for two years. She then expanded her services to freelance writing and launched her own blog called And Then We Moved To in which she explores expat life, raising multicultural and uh, multilingual children, and world travel. Her writing has been published in several outlets, such as the Global Living Magazine, the Huffington Post, and Expat Connect Dubai. Mariam is also regularly invited to speak to the Dubai's uh, expat population to share her experience about expat life and raising TCK children. So Mariam, there's so much to say about you. This was just a summary. Is there anything important I missed? And tell us what's happening in your world now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Amel. I think you did a great job <laughs> capturing all of that um, so succinctly. And it's, uh, it's, it's good to hear, yes, because there was a time I was wondering, what am I going to do with my career? But I guess you somehow fiddled through those tough times and, and, and make it through. Um, yes, I'm just back from, from summer holidays. Uh, we were in, uh, I went first back to Pakistan to see my folks. And then we went to Germany to see my, my husband's uh, parents and family. And now we're back in Dubai, back in the desert. It was uh, 46 degrees here today. <laughs> oh my God. So I'm just happy to be, you know, inside with the, with the air conditioning working. And um, yep, happy to be back. So Miriam, can you, before we start talking about blogging, I would love to know a little bit and share with our listeners a little bit about your background and how did you make that decision? You had a, a, a quite serious corporate career before you started moving around and, and quit your job. So how did, did that process happen and how did you make that decision? Yes, it's a great question, Amel. I think it happened in sort of, you know, spurt, stop and start, stop and start until I finally figured out this is what I wanted to do um, and then felt bold enough to sort of make the change uh, and, <laughs> you know, cut the umbilical cord, go straight for it. Um, I was, uh, you know, I studied economics and political science uh, in college. And uh, I was working uh, straight after college. I was, you know, working in, in the finance industry and all my internships while I was studying had been in finance, you know, in chambers of commerce or, or in banks. And, and after I graduated, my first job was also uh, in investment banking. And that's how I actually started my professional uh, career. And uh, it was great, uh, great experience. 
uh, and everything. But then, as you know, when you're living this life, this nomadic life of, of moving around, um, your career has to almost be as flexible as you. Um, and it somehow has to translate into uh, what you're doing and where you're going. And somehow you have to figure out, you know, can you keep this going in different countries? So my experience was that uh, I was able to keep my finance career alive in certain countries. Um, for instance, uh, in, in Germany, I couldn't because of the language barrier. Uh, initially, I was studying, I was learning German. I just had to learn German first to be able to figure out what to do with my career. So I didn't work in finance then. But an interesting opportunity came up when this uh, old college professor of mine back in the States, he, he said, hey, I'm writing this book and it's going to be an economics research based book and it's going to be on South Asia. Can you do the chapter on Pakistan? Can you do the you know, empirical studies, statistical research, data, interviews, and, and also just write the chapter? And I was like, yes, yes, I'll do it. So that's actually how I got started into writing, even though back then it was economic based writing um, and research based writing. But I think it's good to just never say no to different ideas and just try them out because you never know where it's going to lead uh, lead you to, basically. And that's sort of what happened with me. Um, although the next step I made was to Denmark and I went back to working a very traditional finance role. I was working in international trade and oil in the shipping industry. And I worked as a finance um, in the finance department as an economist. So it was very much uh, your uh, typical mainstream uh, job that you could think of. But towards the end of that stint, I realized I was doing more and more um, writing, uh, you know, writing market reviews, writing market summaries, because my love for writing was there, but it was just coming out in spurts. Um, and and so, <laughs> like I said, stopped and, you know, sort of uh, stop and go. And then I moved to Singapore and I became a mother there about five months into our stay there. And I said, this is it. <laughs> now I'm just going to switch to writing. So I became a travel writer and a content editor for a local lifestyle magazine there and switched to writing full time. And that's how it started. And then when I moved to Dubai, I, I really wanted to build up my own business and my own brand and my own blog. And so I started uh, writing, uh, you know, and building up my own services uh, here in Dubai. And that's how, and then we moved to start it as well. I'd love to know, how did you get to have, like move from deciding, okay, now I'm, I want to write, I don't want to go back to corporate. Uh, how did you do that switch from that decision to getting a job at that magazine? Um, it's, a, it's a funny story. <laughs> um, I had made the decision in my head, but done absolutely nothing about it, um, you know, and uh, except for mentioning it to one person. And this is where the importance of networking comes in, because <laughs> this one person then invited me to a tea at her place. And uh, the editor of this magazine was also at this tea at my at our mutual friend's place. And she said, you know, I'm looking for writers, I'm looking for editors. And uh, my the host, my friend said, oh, you should just hire Mariam. She's just announced that she's going to be writing. Um, so that's really how it happened. And uh, of course, I did submit everything properly after that. But I think as a writer, you spend so much time behind the computer, behind, you know, behind your laptop. And it's so important to get out there and tell people what you're doing, because that's really how um, people are going to know what you're doing and then keep you in mind for something that could come along. Yeah, this is such an important advice that you just shared here. You know, get out there and tell people what you're doing. It does not mean that you're selling. You're not, you were not, because I, I have so many clients tell me I don't like to sell. Though, and networking is not about selling. It's just about making people know what you're doing. And, yes. and they will eventually recommend you like your friend did. So this is really, really already a great advice that you're sharing here. So thanks for that. Um, so you get the job there, then you move to Dubai and start a blogging. So how did that process start? How did you start like going instead of getting paid for doing that job? You just took the risk of starting your own blog and having being paid as a freelance for writing. So how did that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's um, and it's great to reflect back on this <laughs> on this whole experience, and I hope that it will help someone else who may, may be in the same shoes or maybe considering uh, the same uh, same career choice. Um, I think uh, you uh, just realize that it's now or never. So if you want to do it, you just have to 
sort of uh, just just throw yourself in the deep end. So I just decided to get started. Um, I had no clue whatsoever how to go about doing it. Um, I'm the kind of person like, you know, if I if I have to learn a foreign language, I need to be in a classroom. I need the rules. I need the guidelines. I need the grammar. And as far as your career comes, I felt totally unqualified because um, I felt very qualified to do finance jobs, but no one had ever trained me how to become a writer. Nobody. And there's there was no guidebook. There was I, I just didn't know where to start. So it's a lot of um, learning by doing. But I will share a few things that worked very well for me uh, in hindsight in this process. Um, the first thing, like I mentioned, was don't keep it to yourself. Tell everybody what you're doing. Um, the second thing was uh, really to just uh, not say no to any opportunity, uh, just to go for it. Because in the beginning, you know, you're always like, oh, am I being paid for it or not? Is it enough exposure? Is it not? And in the beginning, sometimes you can't afford to be that choosy. Like one thing I did, for example, I pitched uh, an article, an idea for an article to like a local um a local uh, organization here, which is gears, you know, geared towards expats here in Dubai. And I said, I want to write an article for you on how to raise multilingual children in the UAE. I think it will do great with your demographics and it's going to be something so many expat parents can relate to. So they're like, okay, fine, you can write the article, but we won't pay you for it. And then, of course, as a writer, you're like, oh, no, they're not going to pay me for it. Well, what do I do? Should I do it? Should I not? And I made a split second decision thinking they might not pay me for it, but this might lead to something else that could be bigger and better. And to be honest, that's exactly what happened. They did not pay me to write that article, but a few months down the road, an organization here, a local organization read that article and said, hey, we loved your article. Can you come and give a talk uh, to our community about how to raise multilingual uh, children in the UAE and, and let us know what are your speaking fees? And I was like, what are my speaking fees? Hold on, let me <laughs> let me think about that for a second. But I mean, what the gamble I took really did pay off and you never know who's reading it. So if you think this is something worthwhile writing about and you feel passionate about it, do it. Because you never know who is out there reading your words and what it's going to lead to. And um, that's just one example of, of how I sort of <laughs> manage my way through this uh, through this journey. A lot of learning by doing. And then the, the last point I think which is really important is that I thought, I felt so much pressure on Mel because I felt like, the, all, you know, whether I'm a success or a failure, it's all on me. It's all on my shoulders. Like, it's just me. I'm the one who's responsible for it. And I'd always worked in teams before, finance teams, investment teams, investor relation teams. And suddenly there I was without a team because as a writer, it's just all, it's down to you. Um, and I, I really missed <laughs> having some guidance. I missed having a mentor. I missed having a team to spar with. And as a writer, I realized you really do need all of those things. As a blogger, you need all of those things. So the other crucial in, uh, piece of advice or information that I'll share that helped me through my journey was to reach out reach out to, to other writers, reach out to other bloggers. I was lucky to get a very, very amazing mentor um, who helped me and, uh, you know, sort of sculpted my writing journey. So those things are very important. And I think we don't have to do it alone. <laughs> There's so much amazing help and resources out there. Yeah, so I was saying Nomad Nation, this is really amazing. And I hope that you really paid attention of every single word that Mariam just said. She just spoke really quickly. So I'm going to summarize because these are real <laughs> nuggets, what you've been sharing here. And the first thing is, it was amazing that you managed to do it out of nowhere. You have never done that before, blogging, writing, etc. And you just did it. And I think that's the beginning of everything. Just do it and learn by doing. And don't dwell on your idea for too long. Test it out. The only way to know if an idea is going to work is by actually starting and testing it out. So that's a very good point. And we mentioned already before, once you make that decision, picture yourself doing it and then start telling people, even if you didn't start yet, you know, <laughs> so that's going to help you visualize yourself doing it. And then that's, I think, what happened with you. Then you tell something so important about offering your services for free and how useful that could be and how to be strategic about it, especially at the beginning. Don't be too picky. Uh, take the opportunities that come to you, Nomad Nation, and you will see it will bring to you 
a lot of other opportunities, even if this first one or second first ones are not being paid. And I think what you did, Mariam, is that by offering your writing services for free, it set you as being the expert on a topic because you showed your expertise. So it's like offering, it's like sometimes refusing to give a resume to a company and, and because because, hey, you should hire me nevertheless. So that's the thing about, about starting a business. You have to prove your expertise before you get to be invited to, to be paid for certain things. So uh, that's really great advice. And, um, and yeah, the, 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 the other thing you mentioned, and I want to dig deeper into it, it's very important, is this loneliness. I, I discussed it so many times, you know, how lonely it can be to start a business, especially if it's a portable and virtual business. And so what you've done, you surrounded yourself with a mentor. So how did you do that? How did you find the right mentor for you and got to learn and get the right skills, etc.? Uh, yes, I completely agree, Amel. I think we need all the support when you're building your own business. Uh, you never need to do it alone. Uh, you can get support in so many different ways. People to spar with, get a mentor, get help, you know, in other different uh, for your marketing, for your creative input. Um, I was very lucky and uh, I uh, happened to be sitting in my living room one day here in Dubai and uh, I was on social media and I saw, you know, um, uh, somebody had posted uh, or shared rather, I think, uh, a post uh, asking for, and it said something like, are you an expat writer or are you, you know, writing about your nomadic life, etc." cetera. Um, and uh, it was actually uh, an advert for the Parfit Pastoral Writing Residency yeah. program with uh, FIGT, with the Families in Global Transition. And Joe Parfit's name was mentioned as the mentor. And I had no clue who she was. I'd never met her, never heard of her. I just looked at the post and thought, wow, this is interesting. This is exactly what I need. Just somebody who has so much experience in the publishing world to show me the ropes and sort of give me the training and the uh, understanding and the insights as to uh, how to mold myself as a writer and uh, sort of go about, you know, what are the skills I need and how to do that effectively. So that's how it started. And I think uh, the PPWR is great for budding writers if, if people are interested interested in doing that, that would be a great, it's a great stepping stone because again, it leads you to so many different uh, opportunities and having a mentor is one of those things that until you have it, you don't realize how much you need one. (laughs) Um, And it's, and it gave me not just a mentor, but an amazing team of writers to work with. And it really helps uh, writers need other writers to spar with, to, uh, you know, sometimes compare strategies, to brainstorm, to collaborate. Um, and and it's, it's really amazing because you know you're all in this together. It's not really just one person out for their personal gain or anything. Or, you know, you can all learn so much from one another. So that's really a key learning. And I didn't realize that that's how being a writer would be I thought again that it was a very individualistic career I thought when you're building your own brand and your own blog it's just going to be you 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 can only depend on you you can only learn from yourself but I would really encourage other people to learn as much and this is regardless of whichever industry you're in learn from others around you seek out that's really a great advice um so you know what? There's one thing that when you talk, you mentioned a lot that, um, well, first of all, I think Nomad Nation, one thing that makes every single one person I interview on the show successful is when they invest in themselves. In learning, when I say invest, it means investing time, energy, and also um, finances in order to get the skills you need to succeed. And that's a really, really big message that you shared here, Mariam. So thank you for that. And there's another thing when you talk, you know, you mentioned always like you're lucky and, and you are lucky, but honestly, I don't think it's luck. It's when you decide something <laughs> and you put your mind into it, the universe brings it to you. I really yes. believe in that. You're very right, Amel. I'll tell you another crazy thing I did. This was back in, I think this was, this was 2016 when I started my blog. I got up one morning and I said, hey, I'm going to write to Ariana Huffington from the Huffington Post and just introduce myself to her and say, hey, I think I've got some great writing which you might be interested in or which might work well uh, for the Huffington Post. Uh, This was back then. They've made some changes now. So it's, you know, it's, um, she's no longer at the helm, but back back then she was so let's explain just a little bit who's ariana because she's a big figure she's uh, do you want to <laughs> explain a little bit about ariana 
<laughs> yes. Uh, well, she's now she's not at the helm of the Huffington yeah. Post, but the Huffington Post is one of the biggest uh, news networks uh, and publications out there. And back uh, in 2016, uh, she was basically the one managing um, all the content uh, released on the Huffington Post. And as a writer, you know that if you manage to get on their front page, it's gonna really do well for your career, uh, for your exposure, for your name, for your brand, for your blog, whatever it is that you're looking to increase. Um, I think the key thing for me was to not overthink things and just do it. Because what, what's the worst that could happen? She could write back or she couldn't, maybe she could not, maybe she wouldn't write back. Maybe she'd just ignore my email. That's fine. At least I tried. Or she wouldn't, uh, or she would write back maybe and say, I'm sorry, but we don't think your voice is a good fit for, you know, our audience. And, and that's fine. You know, you're never going to be the perfect fit everywhere. So you, you'll get a few rejections. That's fine. And as a writer, you need to learn how to deal with those rejections. That's part of the learning process. I think, exactly. Well. So everything is just going to help you no matter how it turns out. So I think it's important, and this is something I struggled with, but you just have to let go of your fears. You just have to say, and you have to believe in yourself, and you have to know that what you're putting out there is good, and it does deserve an audience, um, and it does deserve a chance. Whatever it is that you're doing, uh, give yourself a chance, um, because you know I think it's really important to believe in yourself. And so that's what I did. I sent her a very quick two-line email saying, hi, Ariana, hope you're having a great day. Um, I'm copy pasting an article I wrote, which I think will do really well on the Huffington Post. Um, and I hope to hear back from you soon. And she wrote back the next day and said, I'm, uh, uh, we would love to feature your voice. I'm CCing, you know, our blog editor, um, and she'll give you the password so you can just, you know, um, get access right away. And that was the the, the craziest thing I've done in a long time, because I have to, as much as I hate to admit it, but being an economist had made me a very cautious person, very like risk, um, risk averse almost. Um, but if you have a new career and you're starting out, I mean, everything is, is, is fresh and new. So you just have to go for it. You never know where you're going to end up or where it leads to. You know, there's already one big tip that you shared here. And on top of having the guts to just do it because and, and approach people and offer them, you know, to write for them, it's um, what we call guest po guest uh, blog uh, guest posting. And this is yeah. one of the greatest strategies for bloggers to get their name out there and build an audience. If you write regularly for a big platform that wants you to write for them, they will mention your blog, and that yeah. can drive traffic. So that's already a great strategic move that you made to reach Huffington Post, which is one of the greatest platforms for writers to to, to be guests on it. You do it for free, but at least it brings yeah. you it brings you an audience. So how effective was that for you? It was very effective. I have to share though, and I'm very happy to share even more details if anyone's interested or mm -hmm. wants to, you know, send a comment. I'm happy to respond to that as well. Um, I, I think as a writer, you develop a really keen sense of, uh, you know, which, which article is going to do best on which platform. Uh, and this happens pretty quickly if you're paying attention, if you're reading different new, you know, news sources, different publications, different blogs, different uh, expat organizations, you, have, you develop a pretty good uh, sense and a pretty good feel of where your words are going to do best and where they're going to resonate uh, you know, the most with and which audience is actually going to respond to what you've written. And since I started in 2016, I've only put two articles on the Huffington Post, just to continue this example. But each time I've done it, it's paid off such big dividends um, that it's completely worth it not to be paid for these two articles, but to have built up, uh, you know, a certain amount of subscriptions, certain amount of readers, certain amount of, uh, you know, your audience. And, and now it's to the extent where the second article I posted on the Huffington Post, I was dying to post it on my own blog, but I didn't because I knew that it would be much better. Uh, it, had, it would have a much better chance of actually being widely received and would actually be reachable to, to a bigger audience if I put it on the Huffington Post. And that was an article. Uh, it was called Seven Reasons Why Travel is Never a Waste with Young Kids. Uh, 
And it was a topic I felt very passionately about. Everyone was telling me, why are you traveling so much with young children? They're, they're not going to remember any of it. And so I wrote it in the heat of the moment and just put it on Huffington Post. And uh, it did really, really well. And I think you uh, just sometimes have to take that uh, take that leap in making you you really want to put it on your own blog but you know it's going to do it's going to be in the long run definitely uh more <laughs> you know uh, it's going to perform better if you put it on a on a different platform which can reach more people so those are the type of decisions that you learn how to make as a writer and develop a good feel for and you know there's another thing very strategic that you said again this whole thing about one thing you have to know, no matter nation about blogging, is that if you guest post, you're not allowed, and you should not. In any case, uh, it's not beneficial for you to put that same article on your blog because of SEO, search engine optimization issues, and the, usually the the platforms that allow you to write don't want you to have that same article in your blog. So that was very strategic of you to pick the one great article that you loved, that you wanted to put in your old blog, but give it in another platform that has more reach than you. And that brought you so much traffic. So this is a very good strategy already that you're sharing again. Very smart. Uh, one thing that I also noticed with that article you mentioned is the title. Uh, it's a very good and catchy title. Do you have any tips regarding titles? Because I think you, the one thing that you have to win with blogging is to get people to click when they read the article yeah. and read it. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> what are your couple of tips maybe that you have in order to build a good title? This is so funny. Sorry, I'm having a laugh here, Mel, because the question you just asked is a question I always ask myself. And uh, my husband makes a lot of fun of me because even back in college, like before I started writing a paper, I had to have the perfect title and the perfect first sentence. And he'd make so much fun of me. He'd be like, just, 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 just start it. Just, you know, write it. And, you know, you can always come back and change it. And I'd be like, no, 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 I can't work like that. I need to first get that right. Um, and somehow that's translated as a blogger. And as you very correctly uh, mentioned, you know, your SEO title is so crucial. Um, uh, just to continue with this example, the two articles that I did publish in the Huffington Post, one was, um, 10 ways to be a kick-ass expat. And uh, you sometimes need a bit of energy and enthusiasm because you're trying to make a point. Um, there are lots of search engines that you can actually, or not search engines, but sort of, um, uh, yeah, kind of search engines that you can use to test out uh, how uh, your title is gonna perform. And it actually gives you a score and rates uh, how good your title is. And, and if you're writing blog posts, you should definitely do that anyway for each and every title. Check out how good your SEO title is. Um, it, it'll, it'll give you like a green light you know, when uh, you've come up with something good. And um, there are a couple of other resources that perhaps we can put in the comments or in the links uh, for people to try out. Yes, because that's a very important point. Um, Titles are important, and uh, I do spend sometimes a lot of time thinking about what it is going to be. Um, I think it's sometimes it's a bit of trial and error with anything. You just sort of develop a feel for it. So don't feel, you know, feel free to just use that and, and, and see how it is and sort of play around with it. I have actually a, a really good book to recommend if it might be useful to all of your nomination, Mariam. I'm, I'm from the advertising background. Yes. And, um, and advertising is all about catchy titles and everything. And I have this book that's amazing, not only because it brings you great exercises to build um, titles, but strategically it helps you build the fundamentals of your business. It's called Advertising Headlines That Make You Rich. And it's by David Garfinkel. I'm going to put it in the show notes page. Um, yeah. So that's a great, great book. I really recommend it. And we're going to put the online tools you mentioned in the show notes page of this episode. Um, I want to go back a little bit with your blogging strategy. Okay. Um, you decided to start blogging. So what was your strategy behind it? Why would, why would you do that? Um, I think you build a portable business at the end and a source of revenue. Yes, exactly. I, <clears throat> after living in seven countries in 15 years, realized that I needed a portable career and that I could not make another move without having a career for myself. 
um, because it was so stressful to land in a new country and then try to figure out, well, what can I do here? How do my qualifications match? And can I work uh, in terms of visas and, uh, you know, all the different requirements? Um, so by the time I came to Dubai in 20, uh, I came here in, in 20, uh, when did I come here? Gosh, I came here in 2014. And I set up the blog in 2016 because in 2015, I was busy giving birth and raising my second child. And I took a year off from maternity leave. Uh, and that was to give myself time to actually build up and set up the whole process to launch the blog in early 2016. Uh, the number one reason, as you mentioned, was actually to build up a portable career for myself, something that I could continue to do regardless of where I am in the world. Um, the second thing was I realized uh, that this really was my passion and it took me a long time to realize that. Um, so I wanted to just not be afraid and just say yes and do it. Interestingly, I actually, I, my, my, my sister, who's a content uh, specialist, she set up the blog for me in 2014, but I didn't start writing until 2016. So, it, you know, sometimes the idea is there, but by the time you actually um, feel committed to it. It can take you some time. You go through a bit of uh, doubt uh, and a bit of a, a process, and that's that's fine. It's fine to go through it. I definitely went through it. I had this initial fear, Amel. I thought, if I start writing a blog, who's going to read that? Like, I felt I didn't have enough interesting things to say, and you're always doubting yourself, but that gets you nowhere. You just have to start believing in yourself. So when I finally was ready to do that, that's when I launched the blog. And um, it was for all these purposes, to have a portable career, to also uh, follow my passion. And interestingly, and this is probably the reason, the number one reason that I blog today is to actually connect with people around the world, connect with other parents, connect with other writers, connect with people you know, raising kids in different countries and different languages, people who are traveling, people who are building up a business, people who are living the kind of uh, nomadic uh, lifestyle that we do, because in the end, I'm learning almost as much from them as anything else that I'm putting out. So it's definitely become a two way street. Um, this is really great. So I absolutely love the fact that you did say that, first of all, it was a passion It you turned out to be your passion. But what was your plan behind blogging to make money? Building careers about making money. Let's be honest here. <laughs> so yes. What's the point? Otherwise, um, if I mean, you can also do it just to share your expertise and connect. Like you said, this is the beautiful thing about it. But if you want a career, you need to have a revenue stream strategy. So what was it behind your blog? Yeah, that's a great point. Um, I, I guess, uh, let me think back to how it all started and what I was thinking back then. My plan was uh, to start writing, to start pitching as many international magazines and expat you know, new, news and publications groups out there. And uh, my plan for making revenue, and, and this is interesting, I'll share a few experiences because you know, back then I had no clue uh, who to turn to and ask whether, is this industry norm? Is this not industry norm? I'm in a new industry, I don't really know know what the norm is. Uh, these are all things you have to figure out once you become a blogger and a writer. Um, but for instance, uh, I my goal was to start getting paid for articles that, that I was going to write. Um, so I approached uh, a very big expat organization here in Dubai and I said, I, you know, I just wrote to them, I just emailed them uh, and said, uh, you know, I'm an expat writer, I'd love to meet with you, do you have time for coffee? This is how it starts. You somehow have to make face-to-face -face connections and then it really increases your chance of A, getting an audience, B, showing them you are qualified to do it, which is very important to actually getting paid to do what you're going to do for them. So those are the three steps that I tried to follow in literally every lead or every person I talked to or every person I reached out to. And in this particular instance, they said, uh, you know, uh, oh, yes, we'd love you. We'd love for you to write for us. We're happy to pay you. And they were going to pay a pretty good amount per article, uh, which was I found out over or above industry norm. But there was a catch. They said, we're not going to give you a byline because you'll be writing for us. So we're not going to mention your blog. We're just, you'll be writing for us. And because it's going to be paid uh, material, we, we're not going to be uh, promoting your blog or you as a writer. And I was in a dilemma because my, my two goals of A, making revenue and B, building up my brand and my blog were sort of in conflict here. What do you do? Do you say, yes, I want to get paid for writing? 
okay, I don't give me a byline, don't mention my blog. Or do you say, no, it's, it's equally important to me. And so you just step back from the opportunity. And back then I didn't quite know what to do, but I said, let me just try it out. Let me do, uh, let me do this for, uh, you know, let me write for them. Let's take it a month or two and let's see how things go. And I can always uh, re-initiate uh, the conversation with them depending on how things have gone. So I started writing for them. They started paying me. I, I agreed to no byline. They had a little bio, but there was no mention of, of my blog or anything. So it wasn't building my blog, but it was getting me paid as a writer. So I was meeting at least one objective. Then at the end of, I think, a three-month period, I reached out again to the editor and said, listen, it's been great writing for you. I've gotten so much, uh, you know, great material out there. People have responded and your readership is up as a result of the things I've written for you. But, you know, I've done a lot of research and it is industry norm to have uh, your byline published because that will only add more credibility. You know, if you say that I'm an authority on writing on a topic, uh, that will only build up your credibility because you're the ones who've hired me for writing on topic X, Y, Z, whatever it is. So after three months, they said, okay, fine. <laughs> so we'll pay you and we'll give you a byline. But I guess my point is that sometimes you really have to work hard to, to sort of, you sometimes might have to, you know, choose one goal over the other and then come back to the other. And that's perfectly okay as well. Sometimes you can't have it all. Um, so I hope if this, if this might help other people that you just sort of have to decide what's important for you and, and see the potential potential is always there. And you know, Mariam, I want to thank you because you're giving us so much practical examples here. It's not yes. just theories. You know, you are really feeding us with a lot of information and I hope Nomad Nation, you're really taking that in. Um, and I love this um, example that you gave because of those two goals, you know, uh, you're basically your, bro your blog is mainly your CV. I already made yes. this uh, this this analogy and mm -hmm. and sometimes that blog gets you paid and that's what your goal was to get paid for writing and 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 it was not necessarily only building your audience so that's that's the thing the dilemma that I really loved that you presented very well and you explained it very well um, what I noticed is that recently you changed your website and did a big launch. You meant, I think you went from blog to website, if I, if I summarize it well, right? Yes. yes. So could you tell us what was the strategy behind that and why, why did you make that big change and that big launch of a new platform for your blog, et cetera? Sure, sure. It was a it was a big, exciting project, and I'm happy to share more details about that. Um, I think, Amel, if I put it succinctly, I made uh, this huge blog uh, renovation, redesign, and went from a blog to a website because I finally started taking myself seriously, and I thought, uh, this is it. Uh, I have to take myself seriously. I have to put my best professional um you know, self out there. And there uh, is nothing that can hold me back anymore. I think it was a very conscious decision somehow to accept that you're doing this um, because I just want to make one point sort of, uh, sorry if I'm giving very long winded answers, but you know, uh, as, as women, as, 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 as expat spouses, we, if we say goodbye to one career and say, okay, I'm going to make a career change from A to B, it's really, in, in theory, it sounds simple, but in practice, it's not that simple. Um, your old career sometimes has become a part of you and it calls, you know, calls out to you every now and then. And for me, I kept torturing myself looking at jobs that, you know, on LinkedIn in different countries that I couldn't possibly go for, but they were all in the finance industry. And I just would look at the job descriptions and be like, oh, this sounds so amazing, but I can't do it right now. And I felt even a little bit in limbo, even after after having made the change. So for me, it was just a very conscious decision to do that. And I realized that um, the more professional your, uh, your website looks, uh, it's, it's, and it comes back to the point we were talking about before, that it pays to invest in yourself. It pays to invest in putting your best foot forward. And there are certain things that can really help you be taken seriously, help you get more exposure, get more readers, get more opportunities. Um, as a result of that. So it definitely is, is an investment in yourself in the end. And so I used some of the money that I had made as a writer and just invested back into 
having a professional website designed. And uh, I think it feels good because you realize, you know, you're just investing, reinvesting back in yourself. And that's a good thing yeah. as a as someone who has a business, a brand. I think that's a good thing. There's one thing that I want to um, bring up here really briefly, because we want to talk together and bring as much tips, tips as we want, as we can on how to build an audience as a blogger. Uh, this is our point today. So we already shared a lot about um, guest guest posting, because that's a great way. That's one of the number one way. Number two, um, I want us to talk a little bit about social media, but just before, because you mentioned that you wanted to take this seriously and be seen professionally, there's one thing I notice about you is the quality of your pictures. <laughs> you have invested not only on your website, but you also invested. I think a lot of people underestimate the power of pictures, and that's going to come in the discussion when we talk about social media. But yes. <laughs> I want to, yeah. Uh, I would like you to share that journey, how you made that decision to invest in a professional photographer because your pictures are outstanding with your family. And all the only way I noticed you truly is because of your pictures. I kept seeing these pictures. I'm like, wow, who's this woman? You know, and so um, yeah. tell yeah, me about that great, process. And that's a great point, Amel. I think um, visual content is so crucial to building up uh, a name for yourself or your business and investing in good pictures is very important. Um, I uh, actually, before I launched a blog, we did a professional photo shoot and the point was to have a professional photo shoot to be used for the blog um, to sort of uh, show us in the in right then as we were our lives in Dubai right exactly two weeks before I launched the blog. Um, and I think, uh, you know, professional photos is, is, is something you just have to do as a writer. It's, it's a great investment tool because you'll be asked a lot of times a, to share it if you're guest posting, you're blogging, you're uh, speaking, you're you know doing different things. You definitely need all of that to sort of uh, put your best foot out there and your best face forward. Um, but I think it also by by putting your best face forward, I think I I'm not the kind who is into very like perfect photos. For me, they have to be realistic and be actually authentic. And I realized that something that's very important to me is to be authentic to who I am uh, and stay authentic to who I am. So part of my visual content strategy is to sort of just put that out. And um, I'm very active on Instagram. Uh, if you follow and then we move to on Instagram, you'll see that I post very regularly on there. But it's not it's not about having that picture perfect, um, you know, postcard picture. That's really not what it's about. It's about good content, visually appealing, but it has to be relatable or it has to be funny or it has to be engaging or it has to be um, you know, uh, something that's going to help you connect with your audience. That's what great visual content is. Not a perfect picture of you, you know, at the beach and it's the, you know, blue skies and, and, and blue ocean and all of that. It just has to actually help you connect to a reader. And if you think of your visual content strategy like that, I think it's really powerful and it can be a very powerful tool to help you sort of portray uh, your world, your, your life, your, your words through pictures. And um, just, uh, just another quick point on social media strategy is that as a blogger, you need to sort of figure out which platforms are your readers on and how to relate to them on each different platform. So you must relate to them, uh, you know, on that particular platform in the way that that's been designed to you. So if it's Instagram, it's, a, you know, you have to make it visual. You have to make it, the content has to just be, you know, something that jumps out at you. So that's very important. Very, very good point. And um, talking about social media, so I wanted to get to this point because it's a double dilemma. You know, you, you want to have yeah. social media followers and people who engage with you um, in order to promote your blog and have them read your blog, mm -hmm. I guess, right? It's very useful to promote your blog. Um, but you still need to have followers in the first place on your social media. <laughs> yes. so, so what were your strategies and the things you implemented proactively? Um, there are lots of different things that I did. Um, it's, it's such a tricky, it's such a tricky thing, Amel, because you want to promote yourself, but you don't want to come across as self-promotional. How do you do that, right, as a blogger? Um, 
I think the best uh, things that I started to do was uh, posting in expat groups, but giving advice for free or giving my opinion when it didn't cost me anything. Um, because the first rule you learn is that when you are willing to give people something that's helpful, they're gonna wanna come back and read what else you have to say. So the first instance is usually try to give. If uh, I have, I'm on a lot of different travel groups, uh, you know, uh, groups mm -hmm. uh, specifically geared towards parents who are traveling, women who are traveling, et cetera, et cetera, or expats, uh, different groups uh, geared towards those. But it's always good to sort of just give, you know, if someone's moving to the UAE, I, I, I try to just give them any help that they're looking for, or I reach out to them and say, hey, I live here, let me know if you need any help, et cetera, et cetera. Because it's just great to actually uh, just give to people and actually connect with them one-to-one -one. because that's actually what expat writing is about. I'm writing about all these issues, but in the end, I want to connect with other people who are going through the same issues who might find it helpful to read about these challenges and sort of also benefit from it. So it's important to make those human connections. Um, and the other important thing about engagement is that I always make it a point, even if someone writes one comment, I have to respond back to it, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook, because imagine you are trying to engage with somebody and they don't write back, that's a big downer. Um, you have to take your audience seriously enough and uh, you have to engage with them. And that really does help you because other people, their friends will see it, other people will see it. Um, it, it, it helps you in having an honest, you know, uh, two-way street, conversation. Uh, and that's really important to building up uh, followers. And the other thing, the last point I might mention is that if I'm, for instance, writing about topics like travel with young kids, how to raise multilingual kids, how to be in an intercultural marriage, how to be an expat and continuously move, how to build up a portable career, how to, you know, uh, figure out all these things with, you know, language and identity and different cultures. Um, then I have also opened myself up to telling anybody who's reading that if, you know, if you have any questions, you can always email me. It's like you can message me. Uh, so there's the blog, there's the official blog that people are seeing. And then there are all the one on one conversations that are happening behind the scenes. And that's really important because you have to stay true to your readers. You have to stay uh, true to giving them advice that you think. And I just had a reader. Uh, she she messaged me. She said she used to be, you know, big. They, she and her husband used to travel a lot. They've just had their first baby. She's so scared to travel again. But she read my article on why travel is never a waste with young kids. And she made the decision to take a trip with their 10 month old. And she'd written to me about it and asked for some more advice that some do's and don'ts and da 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 da. And so I wrote back to her and then she wrote back to me again. And, you know, the trip went amazingly well. And it's, it's so amazing to hear that people are actually reaching out if they need more information. So I think that's how you really build up your blog. You're honest, you're authentic, you give first, um, and you just engage honestly with people um, and help them, whatever it is that they're looking for. This is amazing, amazing insights here. And I want to insist on one thing, you know, I, everybody who has a blog, who wants to get out there, does one of the great strategies, it is to go on all these groups and, and share, you know, your articles and stuff like that. But you said something very important. And I want to in really insist on it because it a huge movement where people will just show up in blogs and, uh, and just share their stuff and leave the, the group. And I think that's something to not do. Nomad Nation, don't do that. Don't go join groups just to promote. Go there exactly like Mariam said, to create a real authentic connection and be there to give and not just to sell. So that's really important because I've seen so many people um, go, it's like spamming at the end of the day. If you just go to groups and just keep posting your articles and ask people to read it and stuff like that. This is not how it works. Yes, go to those groups. That's a great strategy, but build relationship, first of all, with the person who owns that group. Make sure that it's okay with them. Ask them, can I post this article? Um, and answer when somebody answers a question. I, 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 the way it worked for me, for instance, was to never really post anything until it made sense with a question of somebody that asked. Yeah. You know, for yeah. instance, oh my God, I'm so confused in my career. What can I do? 
and said, oh, this is some of, I give a long answer. And then I said, by the way, there's this on top of it, if it helps. So really it takes time. There is no, I don't believe in growth hacking. I just had this chat today on Talented Nomads Facebook group, growth hacking, which is the concept of going everywhere. And just- that's a great term. I'm going to interrupt you to say that's a great term. <laughs> Uh, yeah. it's, it's a whole trend since these last year is called the growth hacking and, and a lot of people started businesses around this, but it didn't last too long because no. you cannot, the real business is a business that's sustainable and based on the long-term relationships. And you cannot think that you can become a good and blogger and a blogger that makes money if you only think of the short-term results. So I really want to insist on that. And you beautifully said it and expressed it. So thanks for that. So one, go to the groups, build relationships with all the platforms where your audience is, but be authentic and think of giving before taking and selling. And uh, the second thing you said that's really important, make sure, you know, what's important is not how many people follow you at the end of the day, is how many people engage with you. You can yes. have 10,000 followers and 10,000 thousand likes but if nobody is there to follow to to engage with your content and and comment and and etc that doesn't count but i would say that there are people who are very shy on on social media and who would still benefit from your content even if they don't engage and at some yes. point they will show up this is what i noticed after two years there are people that have been there since the beginning never heard of after two years like oh my god they would send an email and say by the way so be patient yes. about that it's not because nobody likes and comments that nothing's happening but focus on giving value before trying to become this you know viral post and viral blogger yeah. talking yeah. about virality <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever ever experience like a blog post going viral and how did uh, did it happen for you? Yes, those are such great points. I'm just sitting here nodding my head to everything you said, Amel. It's all about the value, absolutely spot on. Um, yes, well, we've already talked about this particular post, um, but I, I guess I didn't mention that it did go viral. This was about traveling with young kids. Sorry to keep mentioning this post again, but it actually was a great example for a content. We'll put it on this uh, show notes page. I'm sure it's going to sure. be useful. Sure. And let me tell you how it went, how it actually went viral, because that's also interesting because people think you just write an article and then, you know, you, you sit back and you've done the job. But no, 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 your job's actually starting uh, right after you, you've written it, because then you need to make sure that there are people who are trying to, who want to read it, will read it and who actually it's going to be interesting for uh, the demographic um, that it actually reaches uh, them. So how do you write a viral blog post? There really is no secret method. I guess my only tip would be write something that you are very passionate about. Um, I, I'll give another example, another viral blog, uh, post of mine, which actually wasn't again on my own blog, but it was an article I wrote for Global Living magazine. It was called The Other Expats, and it was about the, migra the migration work workers here in Dubai um, who are not classed as expats because uh, they don't have the same privilege and they're maybe from a, the wrong race or they don't have the, the same class. And this was a topic I felt very, very passionately about, especially because so many of them are Pakistani and, and I'm from Pakistan and I felt that connection that why am I an expat and they're a migrant worker so I wrote about that and that did very well to the extent that the ambassador of the Netherlands here in the UAE uh, quoted me on Twitter and said these are the voices that we need to hear and I it was it came out of nowhere I didn't expect that he would read it um, but he sent uh, you know uh, this post on Twitter and it felt really good to know that people were taking notice and a post being viral there it can lead to a lot of different things but in this case it led to a lot of awareness and especially within the expat community here in, in Dubai. Um, and I was very happy because it was leading to some change on the ground. And you realize what powerful, um, what, a, what a powerful impact you can have as a writer if you write about topics that you are really passionate about. So that was one thing. And the other, this article on travel that also went, uh, that went viral, um, overnight, I think I had, or maybe not exactly overnight, but over a period of uh, three days, I had um, more than a thousand likes on my Facebook page, more than uh, a thousand readers. Uh, engagement was up, traffic was up, readership was up, subscription was up. 
and my inbox was flooded and in a very good way with a lot of people um, asking different questions and just engaging, just engaging uh, with me. And um, I, uh, what happened was that this post actually did so well that Huffington Post put it on their main page and promoted it on their Facebook page. So once it gets on their Facebook page, I think it had over 5.6K likes and it, it reached a huge audience and it had lots and lots of engagement, lots of comments. And uh, it was so funny because I was away for a few days and I had no idea why my phone was going crazy. I, didn't, I hadn't seen the post on their Facebook page. And then when I saw it, I realized, oh, that's where all the traffic is coming from. Um, but you do have to work really hard to make a post go viral, you have to promote it uh, yourself. And another point that I wanted to make, and I'm not sure, uh, I don't think I touched upon it, is that as a, as a writer, it's important to, to sort of be a part of different writing groups uh, that can help you in your writing journey. And I'd like to mention a few that have helped me in case you know, they might help somebody else as well. One a group that I'm part of is Multicultural Kid Blog, uh, Kid Blogs, and it's a group of writers all around the world and um, we're all raising multicultural kids and we're blogging about that and we're pooling in our resources and it's a great place to learn from other writers it's a great place to sort of uh, share what you're doing and I've got a lot of support from this particular group and now I'm also giving it back I'm, I'm currently on their editorial board and I'm learning so much just by editing other people's content and that's something you need to also learn as a writer it's not just writing yourself but actually it's amazing how much you can learn from editing other people's content about SEO, about what works best, about different strategies. So give back to your writing community, learn from them and also try to give back. And of course, FIGT has been amazing. The PPWR, Parfit Pasco Writing Residency, uh, meant that I was part of a very um, close-knit group of writers and we're constantly sharing our journeys and what we've learned and trying to apply that. So different groups, and then I'm also part for a part of a group here that's local group, uh, you know, for Dubai-based uh, bloggers, because then you somehow need a bit of local understanding, like what is the industry practice here in Dubai, for instance, if that's where you're blogging. And I need that, that I might not get from some other international group. So it's important to have this whole wide range of resources to be a part of it, um, to, to contribute to it and to learn from it equally, equally as important. Really amazing, Mariam. So much value in what you're sharing here. And I can't agree with you more. You know, whatever you're doing, blogging or any other business, the most important, one of the most important things is to belong to your industry. Yes. And, yes. and make sure to connect with the other professionals of your industry. So whether you're blogging or not, that's a huge tip. And then the second thing that you mentioned many different ways is build relationships, yes. give and learn and you never stop learning so this is amazing so if you're nomad nation you're thinking about blogging or you're already blogging ask yourselves what is the niche that i'm targeting what topic i'm talking about and what industry i am in and reach out to the major platforms who seek for this community and are happy to help you but you also have to be there to support and help. So um, I was going to ask you in a way, you know, uh, how unique is your blog compared to others? But does it really actually make sense to be really different in blogging? I wondered if you have any thought about that. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I do sometimes um, ask myself the very <laughs> exact same question. Uh, how do I differentiate myself from others? And, you know, Amel, as a writer, it takes time for you to develop your voice. And you may start out writing about topics that you think are more relatable to a lot more people. Um, so let's say you start out by writing about uh, the fact that you keep moving every three to four years. You know that there are lots of people who are living this lifestyle and they'll be able to relate to your post. Um, I think what I have realized uh, at this point in my journey is that I really have to be true to who I am and not shy away from the harder topics uh, to deal with that may not be um, so that may not be so clear cut that it, they're going to perform well. Um, 
And like I wrote recently about uh, being a brown expat, what does privilege mean for me? Uh, I wrote about how I got denied a visa uh, to go to Bali on my Pakistani passport, but how the next year when I became an Italian citizen, I applied, uh, I was able to go, I didn't need to even apply for a visa, I was just able to go. And here I am, I'm the same person, um, just two different passports allow me two different opportunities. So it's important to stay true to who you are. Don't be afraid to tell the stories that are sort of difficult to digest. Um, another dilemma I had as a blogger was, should I comment on political uh, political events happening around the world? And you know, I have a I have a degree in political science. It's very hard for me not to separate politics from my international identity because it's shaped so much of it. Like I arrived in the US just a few we, a few months after 9-11 happened and that actually led me to studying politics. And so when events like Charlottesville happen or events like something big happens, um, you always are in a dilemma, is this, gonna really, is this gonna resonate with my audience or not? And I realized that being an expat has made me sort of stand up for what I believe in and being a writer has given me the, the chance to voice what I believe in. So if I believe in diversity, I'm going to write about that. I'm going to speak up for diversity. I'm going to speak out for multiculturalism. I'm going to speak out for tolerance. I'm going to speak out for all the things that really do define me or the life that I'm leading, and because these are the key things that define my household, because we're all from different cultures, living abroad, and we wouldn't be able to function if we didn't uh, you know, uh, respect each other and have that level of tolerance. So this is my everyday reality. And I realize that if it means so much to me, I'm going to write about it. And so just to sort of bring that to <laughs> bring that point to a close, if it means some, so much to you, uh, your passion will always show through. So definitely use that as a gauge. Oh my God, this is, <laughs> I don't think there's a better answer to how to be unique than the one you gave us. And again, very detailed and really good examples. Um, Nomad Nation, here is the message in one sentence. If I try to summarize it is find your voice and speak up for what you believe in. And there's nobody, I love this quote. I cannot remember exactly that says, just be yourself because nobody can be you. Yes. Yes. Simple. So that's the point, you know, and, and you just spoke about things, sometimes taking an edge, like, um, I don't know if you know, uh, Seth Godin, who tells yes. you to be on the edge. So mm -hmm. taking a stand in a sometimes risky way is also a way to be unique because if you really truly believe in it, it's okay if no, not everybody agrees with you. And I think that's where a good blogger is and a good also influencer and a good entrepreneur is somebody who stands for the edges that they believe in, even at the risk of having people who do not agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll just build on your uh, build uh, on on your point just to say this: that as nomads and as people who are constantly moving around the world, we have such an advantage, Amel, because we understand the world from so many different points of view, and we've lived in so many different cultures that we can relate to different things that are happening. And I think. Um, how to set yourself apart is is really, you know, you are your unique person because of your unique experiences. So use that. Don't shy away from it. Don't brush it under the rug. Don't uh, discount it. Use your unique past and use your unique experiences and your challenges and the mistakes that you've made. God, I've made so many mistakes. I mean, there should be just a whole session on, on learning from just those mistakes because that's part of being authentic. Uh, you, 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 you know, sort of confess when you've made a mistake or you, you know, have done something that, you know, you just need to learn from or have taken learnings from. So that's really part of being unique. Um, and I think that's, so crucial because people aren't looking for just, I don't know, just another person talking about uh, telling them how the world should be. They want to hear about um, really authentic stuff. So yeah, very good. be authentic. You know, Mariam, we could have like an endless conversation. You've brought so much value here and I have so many more questions, but I think we have to bring it to an end. <laughs> so I would like to know before we say goodbye, um, is there any, uh, first of all, one last big message if you if there's something we didn't cover about blogging and growing an audience and monetizing it that you think we should say here before we say goodbye 
Um, I think I would just uh, stress that uh, if you're a blogger, just remember you don't have to do it alone. There are people who can uh, help you, who you can reach out to. There are groups. There are uh, so many places where you can get mentorship. Um, don't think that you have to do it all alone because really that would be a frightening world. And that's not the world that I believe in anyway. I believe we're all interconnected. So relationships, build upon them. Use your um uh, you know, use your uh, resources that you have to sort of uh, learn from other people, reach out to them, connect. And um, I think don't be afraid. You're going to make a few mistakes. Things might not go according to plan um, or maybe how you envisioned them. Um, but it's OK. It's all part of the learning process. Just go with the flow. Fantastic. So, Mariam, this was amazing. I could continue talking to you for hours. So, um, thank you so much. Thank you, Amel, for having me. Nomad Nation, I hope that you enjoyed the great insights of our guest today. If you did, please make sure to share it with your friends. See you at the next episode and stay tuned to turn your challenges into great opportunities.